Hello, my students. This is your history teacher, Mr. Jacobson. I'm really excited to especially be here with you because this is our first webcast of the year. Uh, I personally think that's special, and uh, maybe even you do. Who knows? But I'm really excited to be here with you. We're going to talk about early humans today. I broke it up into part one and part two. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, share with you the the uh, the content of the early humans and how who they were and how we all came to be according to science. And what you will do is you'll go ahead and take notes of what you think is important, and you will create a one-page summary uh, of of those notes using them, and then you'll turn them in on Monday. So I will have already gone over that with you in uh, on. Uh, beforehand in, in class so this shouldn't be new information so let's go ahead and begin okay so historians if you can see this uh, this uh, old dude with the white beard and the history book that's what you would call a historian and that's exactly what they do they study history so historians are people who study and write about human past they define history as the period of time that began after people learned to write about, and that happened about 3500 BC. So anytime before 3500 BC is called prehistory. So just to summarize, okay, if it's 2000 BC, that's after 3500 BC, so that would be considered history. If it's 8000 BC, that's before 3500 BC, so that would be considered prehistory. Okay, another individual I want you to get to know is an anthropologist. Now, an anthropologist is an individual who uh, studies how humans developed and related to one another. They basically study the culture of other people. Now, the culture, the definition of culture is the knowledge, beliefs, customs, and values of a group of people. So, anthropologists are, um, they usually study modern cultures meaning cultures are still going on today. Uh, there are anthropologists who have lived with uh, people out in the Amazon, people out in Papua New Guinea, um, to kind of learn their ways and their culture and, and, and why they believe what they do. And then another person I want you to learn about is the archaeologists. Now, archaeologists study uh, the past based on what people left behind. So archaeologists, they hunt for evidence buried in the ground where settlements might have once been. And what are they doing? They're searching, they're digging, they're searching for fossils and artifacts of things that people have left behind. So what's a fossil? A fossil is a part or imprint of something that was once alive. So you got bones, footprints preserved in rocks are examples of fossils. Also you can have a plant that was embedded in, in some mud and rock and that became fossilized and as you can see here over in uh, the picture here we have a fossil of what it looks to be a prehistoric animal of some kind and artifacts so what are artifacts artifacts are objects created by and used by humans this includes coins arrowheads tools toys and pottery so an artifact is anything that was created by a human long ago. So uh, to give an example, if you picked up a rock from 8,000 BC, that's not an artifact. However, if in 8,000 BC there was a human that picked it up and then started rubbing it in a way that he made a sharp edge on the rock so he could use that to cut things with, then that would be an artifact because that rock was altered by humans to become a tool. Does this make sense? Okay, so uh, weapons can be tools because those are things that you had to make with your hands and create and construct, so that becomes an artifact. Okay, so all these things here you see, they're artifacts. Most of these things are found in the, in the ground because they lived so long ago, the ground and, and dust cover it up and eventually it gets way underneath the earth and, and the only way to find it would be to dig so that's what archaeologists do a lot they like to dig okay so we're gonna go to part two now and in part two we're gonna talk about Lucy 
Now, Lucy was discovered by a man named Jonald Johansson. Uh, Lucy is what you would call a hominid. And what does that mean? She, she uh, lived about two million years ago, and she was small, and she walked on two legs. Now, walking on two legs was a really key step in human development. And again, I'm, I'm going to go over the, hist the, uh, the scientific method about how humans came to be. Okay, so this is a Lucy here. This is all that was found of her. So it's, I don't know, it looks like we're probably got about maybe 65, 70% of her. And based on what they found, they could try to kind of construct what Lucy may have looked like 2 million years ago back in Ethiopia on the continent of Africa. Okay, and here's a reconstruction or recreation of what Lucy may have looked like due to an artist. As you can see, she's walking on two legs. She does not have to use her knuckles to drag on the ground to support herself like gorillas or like chimpanzees have to do. Uh, she is completely uh, bipedal, which means she, she's walking on two legs. Up here, you can see she looks very much has ape characteristics and features. So the scientific theory of human evolution. So here would be the ape, and as you can see, the ape's using its hands to support itself, so it's using its knuckles. And then here would be kind of what Lucy was, where she's walking without putting her hands down. And then this guy here would be called Homo erectus, where he learned to walk up straight. See how he's walking straight, and Lucy's sort of hunched over somewhat? This guy would be a Neanderthal. Okay, you probably learned about them back in the fourth grade or so. And then this person would be what we call a human. This is what, what we would all what, what we're all characteristic as. It's called a Homo sapien. Okay, so once uh, humans developed, it entered into the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. Okay, this period received its name due to the hunters and gatherers that used stone tools and weapons for killing animals. So once Homo sapiens or humans were able to create weapons. Uh, they create them out of stone to defend themselves, to kill, to, uh, to, to eat and sustain their life. And we call that the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. So men would go hunt and women would stay near the camp and they would gather edible plants and berries. So they had two very distinct uh, uh, roles, but two very important roles at the same time. At first... Hunters used clubs and drove animals off cliffs to try to kill them. But later, they got smarter, and they figured out how to make spears and traps and bone arrows and got better at hunting so that they could sustain themselves with more food to, uh, to uh, preserve their life. They also learned to make fire by rubbing two sticks together, and that was very important to their survival, especially because... We're going to talk about the Ice Age. If they didn't have fire, <laughs> they would have died in the Ice Age. It's just been too too cold. So that was a very key ingredient for surviving. Is so, the Ice Age began about 100,000 BC and ended around 8,000 8, um, 8, uh, BC. So Ice Age was around for a very long time, 100,000 BC to 800 to 8,000 BC. Now, during the Ice Age, huge sheets of ice covered the earth. Many areas that are now underwater were dry land. So, I want you to think about that. So, many areas that were underwater were dry land during the, the Ice Age. That's why we have this theory called the Land Bridge Theory. And this is uh, Russia, and this is Alaska, and they have this small area where it's just covered with water now. But back then, you see all this orange here? This was also land in the Ice Age because the water level dropped. And so land was, was, was revealed more. So we have a lot of people during this time crossing over from Alaska to Siberia um, uh, during this time. So people are migrating to different continents at this moment. So then after the Ice Age, we kind of get into the Neolithic era that's called the New Stone Age. It began around 8000 BC. People learned to polish stones to make tools like saws and drills. It ended in around 4000 BC when people learned to make tools out of metal. So here we have very polished 
nice looking tools and weapons in the Neolithic era. Also came around this time is the agricultural revolution. This occurred um, in the Neolithic uh, age. People stopped hunting and gathering and instead they began farming, building communities, producing food and trading. So there's a huge shift during the agricultural revolution where they basically stop the hunting and gathering and wandering around and they stay in one place and start farming and raise a, and be a community of people. So what did they do? They domesticated plants. Domestication simply means they used plants. <laughs> so after the ice age, new, uh, new plants began to grow because it's warmer. Plants don't grow as, as frequently when it's cold. But when it got warmer, more plants were growing. People learned to change plants um, to make them uh, more useful. They planted only the largest grains or sweetest fruits. They led, this led to the development of agriculture or farming. Domestication of animals or the use of animals. Instead of hunting for animals all day, people began far became farmers and would use milk food and wool from animals so instead of killing the animals they'd actually use what the animal produced like their fur their wool their milk to use to sustain and keep them keep them comfortable and warm to uh to sustain life animals were used for pulling heavy loads of wood and supplies as you can see this individual here is using them to pull a plow okay the plow has not been invented yet though and using animals improve people's chances for survival and then lastly, because people were staying in one place and they were starting to grow food in that one place and they were all starting to stay there and become families and, and great, create a community and they built houses because that's where they were staying. See, if you're traveling, uh, if you're just if you're nomadic and you're always moving around, why would you build a house? You wouldn't because you just leave it because you have to leave to go where the food is. But if you can plant food and you can stay there for a long long time then it makes sense to build a house because you're planning on staying there for 30 40 years until you die so why not build a nice place where you and your family can live and be a little warmer so people started building slowly what we call towns or villages and this all happened because they started farming which caused them to stay in one place and so at the end here we have small towns and villages uh, uh, starting to happen and also people are trading because now they have farm food and because they have farm food if they have a lot then they can trade with other people and get other really yummy things as well so that's it for the uh, the lesson today so go ahead and write your one page summary if there are any questions I'll be happy to answer your questions you can email me it's on the syllabus and I look forward to seeing you on Monday thank you very much bye bye